The time has come. I have mentioned plenty of times in the past that I was planning on making a story centered around Azula, and here we are. Today, we are going to be retelling the original Avatar The Last Airbender story, except this time, instead of Aang, Azula will be the Avatar. Now, this is going to get pretty complicated because, as you all know, Azula is the daughter of Ozai, but, as the Avatar, it is her duty to defeat the Fire Lord in order to restore balance to the Four Nations. So what's going to happen? What will Azula do? Is she going to kill Ozai, or is she going to join him and be the first quote-unquote dark avatar? If she goes against him, will she be able to survive and restore the balance? And if she teams up with him, what will happen to the avatar world? All of these questions will be answered in this Avatar The Last Airbender alternate timeline story. If you enjoy this type of content and are a big fan of Avatar, please consider subscribing, and if you enjoy this video, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, let's get into the story. But first, before we actually talk about Azula's early life, we have to establish how she would become the Avatar. Now unfortunately, in order for all this to work, the homie Aang has got to die in the Air Nomad genocide. So now the cycle naturally moves on to water, and just like I did in the Toph series, let's just assume that this dude was part of the Foggy Swamp tribe, and he just didn't care about being the Avatar. So he pretty much just neglected his duties and was just chilling with the boy Hank, picking Picking up girls if there are even any girls in the Foggy Swamp tribe. Now since this avatar lived in an isolated area his whole life, he is able to stay hidden from the Fire Nation and he just dies from old age in 84 AG. Once he dies, the cycle continues on to Earth and let's just say that this avatar died at 1 years old due to some horrible accident. And now the stage is set. Azula is the avatar and we can finally get to the important stuff. Alright, so looking at Azula's early life, it is quite obvious that Azula is kind of demented. She enjoyed throwing rocks at innocent ducks. She sounded happy when she heard Lu Ten died, since it obviously benefited her, and she like burned her firebending teacher because he simply scolded her. So yeah, Azula's kind of crazy. Now one thing to note is that in this story, Azula will be different than the Azula in the original series, and that is because of Rafa. Rafa, as we all know, is the spirit of light. And although it's maybe not made explicitly clear, I feel as though there is an implication that because of Rafa, the Avatar cannot be evil, at least not by nature. So essentially, Azula's inherent lack of empathy is not a part of her character in this storyline. However, you might be born as someone who is a good person by nature, but because of your upbringing, you can turn into something that maybe isn't so great that whole nature versus nurture thing. So even though Azula is not going to be the same in nature, she can still potentially become a bad person as she will practically have the same upbringing. Now obviously with Azula's change in nature, there will be a few key differences to her backstory that I will address as I tell the story. And so without further ado, let's walk through Azula's new backstory in this alternate timeline. In 85 AG, Azula is born to Princess Ursa and Prince Ozai. Growing up as royalty alongside her brother Zuko, Azula was blessed with a large amount of wealth and high social status. As the two of them grow up, Azula proves herself to be a firebending prodigy, making her Ozai's favorite child. Zuko, on the other hand, was not particularly skilled and was thus shunned by Ozai. However, Zuko was much closer with Ursa than Azula was, since Azula spent all of her time with her father. Ozai spent countless hours teaching Azula about the outside world and educating her about politics. The Fire Nation is an absolute monarchy, explains Ozai. This means that there are no laws or statutes. The Fire Lord, my father, has all of the power. But mark my words, one day, all of that power will be mine. Azula notices the determined look on Ozai's face. Why do you want power? asks Azula. Why does it matter if you have power? Power is everything, Azula. If you have power, you have control. And when you have control, you can have everything you want. No one can do anything to stop you. You don't have to rely on pathetic weaklings. Everything is yours. Without power, you are nothing. Remember that, Azula. Azula took those words to heart, and from that day forward, she began training incredibly hard in firebending. Noticing Azula's fast improvement, Zuko starts to train harder too. One day, Azula walks by Zuko's room and notices him practicing the fire kick technique. 
Why can't I do this right? Yells Zuko. I keep trying and it's not working. Try to put more energy into your kick, advises Azula. Azula, what are you doing here? I was just walking by and noticed how badly you sucked, so I thought you needed help. Yeah, whatever. Zuko takes Azula's advice, and after a few more attempts, Zuko finally gets it done. I can't believe I did it, celebrates Zuko. Azula smiles. When they were younger, Zuko and Azula got along very well. However, ever since they both started to learn firebending, they started to distance themselves from each other due to their feelings of envy. Zuko envied Azula because she was constantly praised for her talents and loved by her father, and Azula envied Zuko because he got more of their mother's love. Despite all of this, in this time, Timeline. They never really hated each other. You know, Zuko, I'm starting to get the hang of our royal family's lightning generation technique. You better catch up soon or you'll be left in the dust. No way. You're lying. There's no way you learned it that quickly. Check this out. Azula focuses her energy and attempts to generate lightning from her fingertips. She manages to fire out a blast of lightning, but it is very small in comparison to Ozai's. Wow, that's so cool, exclaims Zuko. Can you please teach me? Fine. I'll do it since you're practically begging me. After closely studying Azula's movements, Zuko tries to replicate them but keeps on failing. On his last attempt, Zuko manages to fire out a blast, but it explodes on his face. Zuko, are you okay? Asks Azula. Azula runs to Zuko's side. What are you doing, Azula? Yells Ozai. Oh, hey, father. I just noticed that Zuko was struggling with his firebending, so I thought I would help him out. Ozai's eyes widen. He walks up to Azula and grabs her by the wrist, dragging her out of Zuko's room. Dad, what are you doing? Screams Azula. Let go of her, yells Zuko. Stay out of this weakling, bellows. Ozai. What do you think you're doing, Azula? What? I was just giving him some tips. He just looks so pathetic trying and failing at the same thing over and over again. What's the problem with helping him? Ozai slaps Azula across the face. Morality and kindness are signs of weakness. Do you not remember what I told you? Power is everything. Azula's eyes widen. I'm sorry, father. After this interaction with her father, Azula started acting exactly like the Azula in the Avatar series. Instead of being kind to people, she does everything everything she can to instill fear in her friends and family. And thanks to this changed behavior, over time, Azula's relationship with her mother and her brother gets increasingly worse. Eventually, like in the original series, Ozai schemes his way into becoming Fire Lord, and Ursa is forced to leave. Zuko must be so sad that mom is gone, thinks Azula, but ultimately this is good for him. Cutting those useless ties of love will only make him stronger. A few years go by, and eventually Zuko is banished and is tasked with searching for the Avatar. After Zuko gets banished, one day during her training, Azula is attempting to fully master her lightning generation technique. However, when she attempts to do it, the attack explodes back in her face. What is happening? Screams Azula. I was able to do it when I was younger. What happened? Why isn't this working? Azula is taken aback by her failure. To compensate for this, she trains even harder in traditional firebending. Alright, so now that we've fully covered Azula's early life, we have to start discussing how Azula will end up figuring out that she is the Avatar. And unfortunately, this is where we run into a problem. If you look back at the original series, we were specifically told that the Air Nomads figured out that Aang was the Avatar because he like picked out all those Avatar toys. And based on this information, I went back to look at Avatar Roku's backstory to see how the Fire Nation made the same conclusion. But all that we're told is that the Fire Sages somehow figured it out. We don't know how they figured it out out, but they somehow just did. So, I mean, essentially, I'm just gonna have to make something up. I mean, so from what we know, the Fire Sages are considered to be very spiritual people. So let's just assume that the Fire Sages met Azula at some point in her life and felt some spiritual connection with her, making them think that she was the Avatar. I honestly don't know if this is even possible. Um, you know, looking back at the Winter Solstice Part 2 episode, when Aang, Sokka, and Katara sneak into the temple, in that episode, the Sages kind of just looked at Aang and were certain that he was the Avatar. Uh, although, I'll be honest, I think that 
that the reason for that was because Aang is like the only air nomad alive. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe their deep spiritual connection was the reason why they were like super certain of that fact. You know, regardless, for the sake of the story, let's just assume that the Fire Sages met Azula and their spiritual sense started tingling. And even though they don't have 100% proof, they decide to just play it safe and warn Fire Lord Ozai. What? Yells Ozai. This is an incredibly bold claim. You better be willing to stake your livelihood on it. Because if you're wrong about this, I'm sending you to the colonies. Well, sir, we aren't entirely sure, responds Fire Sage 1. So are you saying I gave birth to my destined enemy? Are you trying to insult me? No, I wouldn't dare, my lord. I'm just trying to be cautious, sir. If Princess Azula really is the Avatar, we would need to deal with it as soon as possible. How do you suggest we go about figuring that out then? Well, Avatars have a kind of built-in defense mechanism called the Avatar State. When pushed to their limit, an Avatar will sometimes inadvertently enter this form. If we can somehow get Azula to this point, we can confirm for sure whether she is the Avatar or not. Maybe we can have her fight in an Agni Kai? Ozai scowls. Are you suggesting that there is someone out there that can push my daughter to that extent? Uh, I mean, well, uh, there's a Fire Nation mercenary who is known for his unique firebending style. Maybe we can just bring him in and see how that goes. Ozai turns around and starts walking toward his throne. Do what you must, but if you're wrong about all of this, I'm eliminating you myself. A few days go by and the Agni Kai is officially set up. Ozai calls Azula into his room and informs her of the match. And obviously Azula has no choice but to partake. Azula walks onto the stage and looks at the empty crowd. No one here this time, huh? Thinks Azula. It's probably just another practice match against another loser. Shouldn't be too hard. Walking on from the other side of the stage, good old Sparky Sparky Boom Man prepares for the fight ahead. Azula smiles. This should be fun. Father is watching, thinks Azula. Guess I I gotta put on a show. Azula and Combustion Man get in their fighting stances. Azula looks over at Combustion Man. Oh no, it seems you are missing an arm and a leg, says Azula. Must have been a pretty bad accident. How sad. Don't worry, I'll go easy on you. I wouldn't want you to lose another arm. Combustion Man gets irritated by Azula's words. Good, I've got it in his head thinks Azula. Now he'll fight recklessly. A man in the back sounds the gong, indicating the start of the fight. Combustion Man immediately fires a blast from his forehead. Azula is completely caught off guard. What is this? thinks Azula. Thanks to her reflexes, Azula slightly moves her head and thus narrowly avoids Combustion Man's attack. Ozai smiles. Such destructive power. I like it. Azula is clearly shaken. I've never seen anything like this before, thinks Azula. Combustion Man aims an attack at Azula's feet, but Azula jumps over it. Unfortunately, the power of the blast makes her lose balance. Azula falls on the ground. My lord, there's a massive hole in the stage, exclaims the fire sage. I made a mistake, sir. This man is way stronger than I imagined and Princess Azula may not be the Avatar. Call off the match before she dies. Ozai doesn't respond. It seems his power comes from that third eye of his, thinks Azula. If I can find a way to hit it, I might be able to stop his attacks. But at this short distance, there's no way I can get a clear shot. Combustion Man charges up his attack. What's happening? Am I really gonna lose? Me? Lose? It's not possible. This isn't going to happen. I can't allow it. Combustion Man's attack fires at Azula. Oh god, I'm done for, thinks the Fire Sage. I was wrong, and I got the princess killed. The attack is about to hit Azula, but before it does, the attack mysteriously stops in an air vacuum and explodes just in front of Azula. What? yells the Fire Sage. From the blast of the explosion, Azula walks towards Combustion Man. Her eyes glow a bright blue. Combustion Man is taken aback by Azula's power. Azula rotates both of her arms horizontally in a clockwise direction. After a few seconds, a large air tornado forms. Azula sends this tornado towards Combustion Man, but before it can reach him, Azula shoots two large blasts of flames at the tornado. The blue flame tornado engulfs Combustion Man, burning him to to a crisp. Azula's eyes stop glowing and she passes out on the ground. I was right, proclaims the Fire Sage. She is the Avatar. I have to let them know now, thinks Fire Sage Shu. A few hours later, Azula finally wakes up. What happened? 
thinks Azula as she slowly opens her eyes. Where am I? She's finally awake, exclaims Fire Nation Guard 1. Let's go tell the Fire Lord, says Fire Nation Guard 2. Why am I being held here, yells Azula as the two guards walk away. Once my father learns you have imprisoned me, you will experience pain and suffering far greater than you can ever imagine. A few minutes later, Fire Lord Ozai enters the room and walks up to Azula's cell. Father, I'm so glad you're here. These filthy peasants locked me up in this disgusting cage. Please, do silence! yells Lord Ozai. Azula is stunned. Father, you have brought me great shame, Azula, and you shall suffer for this. What? What What are you What are you talking about? You don't deserve something as easy as death. You will be kept in prison for the rest of your life, and you shall speak to no one ever again. Ozai walks away from the cell. Goodbye, Azula. The two guards stay behind as Ozai returns to his throne. What is happening? screams Azula. For what reason did he do that? Did I lose the match? I promise I'll win next time. Please Please let me go, father, cries Azula. That's not the reason you're locked up in here, says guard one. Surprisingly, you actually managed to win your match. What? Then why am I here? And why can't I remember what happened? Turns out you are the avatar, responds guard two. Azula's eyes widen. What? Guard one nods. We saw the entire match with our own eyes. That's actually the reason why we ended up on guard duty. We weren't supposed to see that. When you were about to lose the match, your eyes glowed and then you created this fire tornado. It was pretty cool. But wait, if I'm that powerful, then why doesn't father want me? I could be a great asset to the Fire Nation. I know my father values power over all else, so why would he cast me aside if I'm really that strong? Azula's eyes widen. She starts laughing maniacally. I get it. Father is keeping me locked up because he fears me. He's afraid that I might overthrow him and strip away all of his power, laughs Azula. Azula starts breathing fire from her mouth in an attempt to melt the prison bars. However, before she can make any significant progress, one of the guards stabs her with his spear. You're not getting out of here. Fire Lord's orders. Azula smiles. Don't get too full of yourself. When I become the Fire Lord, I'm throwing you both in here for the rest of your miserable lives. A few days have passed since Azula's imprisonment, and in the meantime, Zuko and Uncle Iroh have decided to stop at a nearby village to get food. So far, there have been no traces of the Avatar. But don't worry, I won't stop searching until I find them, proclaims Zuko. Are you going to eat the rest of that? Asks Iroh as he points at the roast duck. Were you even listening to me? An old man walks up to Zuko and Iroh's table. Hello, good sir, says the man. Would you like to play a game of pie show with me? The man holds up a white lotus tile. Iroh's eyes widen. It would be my pleasure, smiles Iroh. Zuko, please give me a few minutes. Yeah, whatever. Fifteen minutes later, Iroh returns to Zuko's table. That took way longer than you said it would. What happened? I have to go back to the Fire Nation for some important business, responds Iroh. What? That old man is Fire Nation? Do not worry, Prince Zuko. I will be back in two weeks. Let's meet up back here. Um... Okay. Iroh walks out of the tavern. What important business does Uncle have at the Fire Nation? Thanks, Zuko. Alright guys, so that is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. If you guys want a part two, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all later.